we never think it's going to happen to us. A tight-knit family grieving a sudden, shocking loss. The most adorable, most brightest individual in the world you'll ever meet. Tonight, this family wants justice and an end to the escalating violence. Something needs to be done. Different folks want to get vaccinated in different ways. Colorado kicks vaccination efforts into high gear. With every adult now eligible for the shot, our state's adding new options to reach even more people. As folks get vaccinated, we know one of the first calls they make is to a travel agent. It comes as new guidance on travel opens up a world of possibilities for people who get the shot. We will be happy to make a space available for those folks who have really been excluded. And in some local spots, showing your vaccination card could become just as important as showing your ID. Tonight, Denver police say two men are in custody for a shocking double murder yesterday at Alameda and Federal. Elias Chavez and Tlaloc Chavez both facing murder charges for the shooting. And according to the police report, the shots were fired from a gold Honda. And when police pulled that car over just minutes later, they say they found spent shell casings on the floorboard and a child in a car seat in the back. The two who died were D'Angelo Tafoya and David Lara. Both were, we were able to get in touch with Tafoya's family who say he was a single dad working two jobs to provide for his baby daughter. He was shot while simply waiting for a bus. Wow, all right, good evening. Welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. Amid the shock, DeFoya's family is demanding action. As Denver 7 Sloan Dickey reports tonight, the family says violence is becoming too common in their neighborhood. He was just an amazing person. Amazing. Just 22 years old. It's always the good ones that, that leave us. Taken away so soon. This gun violence has to stop. D'Angelo Tafoya and another man were killed on Federal and Alameda on Thursday. They were waiting for a bus. Two people have been arrested for a drive-by shooting. They've both been charged with first-degree murder. There's been dramatic increase of, of violence. And I'm not sure if the, what's going on. A senseless targeting, another death in Colorado's climbing count of victims to gun violence. I'm not a, in the political world, but something needs to be done. D'Angelo leaves his daughter Athena behind. Now his family is reaching out to the community here in Denver for help for his beautiful daughter. The most adorable, most brightest individual in the world. For his burial. Don't forget to hug your loved ones and then let them know how much you love them. And to show the faces of a family torn apart. Whether it's, it's D'Angelo or somebody else's child, there's, it's, this has got to end. By gun violence. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. Tonight, we're getting fresh hints that things could be getting back to normal soon. A mask rules are easing for some of our state. New guidance says fully vaccinated people can travel safely within the U.S. But there are a few red flags to take note of as well. Today, Governor Polis extended the mask mandate for 30 more days. However, counties at level green can lift the requirement in many public places. 31 counties are at level green right now, mostly in rural areas. No matter the level, masks are required for all counties within schools, hair salons and nail salons, tattoo parlors, hospitals, doctor's offices and prisons. The extension of the statewide mask mandate through the end of the month comes as a bit of a surprise. This week, Governor Polis talked about handing pandemic rule control to local governments as soon as April 16th. And even when local leaders gain control of these pandemic rules, you might not see any big changes right away. Uh, Mayor Michael Hancock of Denver said people should expect to see the city's mask mandate remain in place at least through early May. Indoor capacity caps will likely stay in place as well. Now, where you could see a change is outdoor spaces. The city could lift capacity limits there. Now, the problem the city sees, though, is these stubborn COVID case numbers. They are creeping up despite more people getting vaccinated. Let's take a look at those numbers statewide. Today, our state reported more than 1,600 new coronavirus cases. Our case numbers are mostly stable, but are starting to creep up a little bit. As for hospital beds in use because of the virus, 376 is the number right now, pretty much unchanged from the start of March. And if you are feeling hesitant about going out and mixing it up with others, maybe you feel a little better if you knew everybody else in the room was vaccinated. A Denver bar is welcoming customers back tonight, but only if you've got your vaccine card as well as your ID. Liz Gillardi shows us what went into this decision. We are cocktails in conversation on Colfax. Marshall Smith has always thought of his bar as an oasis. 
Bar Max is a relaxing spot to grab a drink, but more than anything, he wants it to be safe. So we are going to ask for both ID, vaccine card. Only vaccinated customers will be allowed inside. Customers still waiting for their vaccine can sit on the patio. Marshall says it's about keeping everyone safe, not only at the bar. He's also a professor, so he's constantly around students and visits his elderly parents. I suppose I made the decision because it seemed like the right thing to do. For some people, it's been more than a year since they've been able to sit at a bar. The owner hopes his decision will give people peace of mind. I mean, the folks who haven't been able to come to a bar are the folks who have been most impacted. Frontline workers, teachers, folks who have had other health concerns. And if we are able to give them a place where they can finally go out. Social distancing can be a challenge in a small space like Bar Max. The capacity was capped at 44 people and that was before COVID-19. We have not had indoor seating essentially since the beginning of the pandemic. They can't wait to welcome customers back. The bar is reopening on the same day vaccines were made available to the general public age 16 and up in Colorado. That's our hope. It's our hope that people are going to continue to be vaccinated. And now that it's open to the public, there's no reason not to. But Marshall knows some people might not agree with his decision and he's OK with that. I guess what I would tell other folks who don't agree is they have many, many other options for getting a drink. But if you've been vaccinated, there's a drink waiting for you. Liz Gilardi, Denver 7. It's not just bars asking people to get vaccinated. Fort Lewis College in Durango will require all students to get the COVID shot if they're enrolled for classes this fall. Students must submit a vaccination record by September 12th, showing COVID-19 protection as well as two doses of the MMR shot. Colorado Public Radio reports it is one of the first schools in the nation to require students to get the shot. Well, updated COVID travel guidelines today from the CDC point toward a busy summer travel season. The agency is now giving the go ahead for fully vaccinated people to travel without the need for testing or quarantining. And I talked to Skylar McKinley today with AAA, and he said when you couple pent up demand for travel with capacity limits at places like hotels, well, book sooner rather than later. If you're thinking about traveling, you should know that everybody else is thinking about traveling. And it's <laughs> right. not going to be as simple as jumping on a plane or getting a rental car. You really have to plan ahead. Now, another complicating factor here, rental cars may be hard to find. McKinley says a lot of the agencies sold off much of their fleet during 2020 just to survive. But really, I think the takeaway here is we're talking about traveling again. It has been a long time. Yes, it has. And you might be wondering, with more people getting vaccinated, will airlines start mandating shots for passengers? Well, we reached out to several airlines this afternoon. Southwest says it is making no changes to its policy at this time. We have not heard back yet from any others. And as for masks on flights, well, it looks like that requirement will continue. The CDC says all Americans, even fully vaccinated, should continue wearing masks. And overall, Americans have a pretty positive outlook on the vaccine rollout so far. A Gallup poll found more than two thirds are satisfied. 68% responded positively in March. That's up from 24% in February. And 74% say they will take a free shot when it's offered to them. And that is the highest level since Gallup started asking this question last summer. All right, now Coloradans can book a vaccine appointment anywhere in the state, and that's creating a trend where some impatient people in the metro are booking appointments in rural parts of the state. And we asked the governor about it today. He said, go for it. You fill out your address as a formality, but it doesn't matter where you live. And, you know, if you are visiting another community, um, learn, you know, enjoy that community. Maybe spend some money in a local store and try out a local restaurant. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. <laughs> And making it easier to get the shot is a top priority for Colorado right now. Black and Hispanic Coloradans are falling behind the white population in terms of vaccination rates. Today, the state launched new vaccine buses aiming to take the shots to the communities where they're needed most. Two buses launched today. Two more will roll out in the coming weeks. Part of Colorado's COVID-19 website for Spanish speakers is getting an update. This week, we noticed some parts of the site hadn't been updated in months. For example, one page showed the state was only vaccinating people 70 and older. After mentioning that to Governor Polis today, he said he would take action. And just a few hours later, a statement was added to the top of the page. It indicates we're in phase two and more information is coming. 
For links to that site and a full recap of coronavirus vaccine information in English and Spanish, head to thedenverchannel.com. And kids under 16 still not eligible for the vaccine in Colorado, and serious side effects certainly are rare in that group, but one syndrome is still cause for concern. The CDC now says more than 2,600 children have been diagnosed with multi-system inflammatory syndrome, or MISC. And of those diagnosed with it, 33 of them have died. Now, symptoms vary. They can include heart and skin problems, breathing problems. It's not clear yet what causes it in some and not in others. The CDC, if your child has a breathing problem, pain in the chest, or inability to stay awake, please contact the doctor right away. How you guys doing over here? A heart for helping others. We don't have affordable housing. We don't have safe indoor space for people to go to. Seeing a surge in homelessness, one woman is stepping in to help. Jesse thinks I need a van and yeah, a van. Even somebody else told me I needed a truck. How you can make sure this mission of compassion succeeds. We hit the 70s again today, but there's an 80 on the way for the weekend.